Good morning. Hey guys, Danielle here, Mama Fit for Life. And this is my very first debut of a Tuesday topic. I thought about Tuesday talk with Mama Fit for Life, but I went with Tuesday topic. So if you guys like one over the other, let me know. Um, but today we're going to be talking about how quickly we can change a habit. You know, you hear people on the regular talk about um, it takes 21 days, three weeks, and things like that. And I've really, over the last few months, been looking at some of my habit changes, how quickly I reintroduce them, how quickly I fall out of habit once I don't have accountability, everything like that. So, hey, Team Unique, thanks for joining. Who else do we have on here? Crystal, SDE, nice. Thanks for being here. Um, so one of the things that really kind of lit this in my head, it, re it was re-inspired by Darren Daly, um, Darren Hardy's Darren, da Darren Daly post from, what's today? Tuesday, I think it was like Friday or something like that. But I went to Australia this year in um, May, March, March, and they walk, hey, Big Joe, how you guys doing? Um, I went to Australia and uh, New Zealand and they are on the opposite side, right? So we do everything on the right and they do everything on the left. So when we always move, we pass on the right, we walk on the right, we do a lot of things to the right. Well, over there, they do things to the left. I've been a world traveler for a while, and whenever I travel, I always look up habits, um, whether it's clothing styles, things like that, not to just blend in, but out of like a respect for the culture of the place that I'm going. And I think it's one of those things that in the United States, you know, I've done a lot of work since I was really young, and you have those things that you're like, Man, when people come here, you're like, oh, if they could just, like, just learn, if they're coming in for coffee every day and they don't speak the language, like, learn that word, right? Something that it's like you're doing it every day, it becomes a habit. So I'd say within three days, um, I probably was walking to the left very quickly. And that was a two-week trip, 15 days total. And by the time I got back home to the United States, I actually kept walking to the left. It was hard for me. I was like, oh yeah, I have to walk on the right now. So it was something that I desired to do. It was something that I chose to do. And that's why habit changes really make a difference if you want them versus you feeling like you have to have them or versus feeling like someone else is telling you. Do you guys feel like that? Like if you're changing a habit and you choose it, it happens a heck of a lot faster than if someone else is telling you what to do. So if you think about the daily habits that you have right now, typically everyone's going to say, I brush my teeth right when I wake up in the morning. I get up, I go to the bathroom, I brush my teeth, I walk and get a cup of coffee. I don't drink coffee, so my big habit is eating within an hour of waking up. Um, whatever it is, maybe it's working out, things like that. So if you look at the habits that you do every single day, why do you do them? You grew up doing them, right? It's probably just something that it's just so natural. Like we're like zombies, literally rolling out of bed, going to the bathroom, brushing your teeth. It's almost like you don't even realize it's happening. It's clockwork. So when you're looking at healthy lifestyle changes, you really want to look at why it is you're doing it and the purpose that you're doing it so that you stay consistent with it. Yesterday, if you watched my Periscope, I gave you five tips to getting up and going, basically for a run, but for a workout. The first thing was stretching before getting out of bed. That's something that when I'm routine with it, it is amazing. This morning, I almost got out of bed. I literally just hopped back in and was like, you know what, I'm just going to stretch. I did my full routine of stretches. It just gave me a whole different level of motivation for the morning, alertness, everything like that. I did my stretches. Then I came and um, got my water to hydrate. I had didn't pull my clothes out last night but I knew right where my stuff was. But that extra two or three minutes, if I would have pulled my clothes out the night before, it's just those habits that help you to get through your day better as well. So um, another habit that I got consistent with over three weeks, but then broke almost exactly the day after the accountability was over, I did a 21 day cleanse. And it was great and I filled up this jug of water every single day. I fill it up to three liters and I drank three liters every day. Well, as soon as that 21 days was done, my program was complete, I really fell off track from drinking my water. It was pretty crazy. And 
I wondered like, why did it, that happen? I really love drinking water. I really like having the jug full because it keeps me accountable at the end of the day. I know that if I look over at the jug, how much water I have left. Um, but I was amazed how quickly I fell out of habit. I no longer had that specific program. I wasn't following all the steps. That was one of the steps and I wasn't doing everything. So that kind of fell off track as well. So here we go. I have my container this morning. I'm going to fill it up. And it takes some time to fill up with water. Sometimes I like to do it at night so it's ready to go in the morning. But I really want you guys to think about what is keeping you in habit. For me, it's accountability. Accountability to myself, accountability to you guys. If you didn't see my um, push-up challenge last night, I literally rolled out of bed at like 10 to 1 a.m. And I just clicked. I was like, oh my God, my push-up challenge. I wasn't asleep yet. And I went out. It took me what? a minute, two minutes, I hit record, I put it on live Periscope, and I got my push-ups in. You guys kept me accountable, and that's three days in a row. And if I do that over the next month, it's going to become such a routine that I can literally just hop down next to my bed, do my push-ups, and hop back in bed. There's no inconvenience. It's going to help me rather than hurt me. Um, so think about the things that you're trying to make a habit. Think about what's not working with them. Do you need an accountability buddy? I've been running the last two days and it's my neighbor. The last time I was consistent with running was with my neighbor. We were getting up at like 5 a.m. Well, then she bought a house and construction changed stuff, right? And our habits changed. And then when we were ready to get back to running, she got a new job. And then her time schedule changed. So we couldn't run at the same times anymore. And that really made a difference. So right now, and it's just this week, our schedules are on track. And hopefully we can stay consistent with it. But in order to run with her at the times that she wants to run, I'm now going to have to get my daughter up early, get her into her stroller, and take her with me. Is that running a priority for me? Is that something that I want to make a consistent habit? Yes, it is. And it's something that will be good for my daughter to be a part of as well. So you want to make sure you have some kind of accountability, guys. If you don't and you're falling in and out of habits, that's why I coach people because it's just that extra check-in. Every now and again, I get that great like sigh of relief, like, oh, I'm so happy that you called to check in because, you know what, I wasn't going to get up and work out this morning and your call really did it or your text really did it. You know, I've really fallen off track. I need to get back into the swing. I'm so glad this is like meant to be. This is the time to do it. Um, and the purpose of a formal program. If you guys, you know when you're in school, you have a schedule, you get there, you do it. You have work, you have a schedule, you get there, you do it. The same thing comes to healthy habits. Formal programs will help you be consistent. Whether it's Tuesday, Thursday workouts at the gym, whether it's a 21-day clean eating, five-day clean eating, whatever it is that you're going to do, you want something that's formal that you have to show up for. Something that, I mean, ideally a lot of people say you have to pay for so that that's accountable. Like, oh, I paid for it already. Let me get my money's worth, right? Because um, fitness and health is free. So if you're really struggling with it and you say like you're not making money, you don't have enough money to be healthy and fit and, you know, fitness is free. You, I just went for a run. It was free. Um, I could go for a walk free. I could go um, jog up, up and down stairs free. There's plenty that we can do for free. So the excuses really kind of take over, but sometimes putting that extra penny into it just helps us stay accountable. Like Oof, I already paid for it. Let me get it done. So reach out to someone today who you are close with, who you can stay accountable with, whether it's face to face on the phone every day, it can be a phone check-in, reach out to someone today and find that accountability person who can keep you consistent with the new habit change that you have decided on. Okay. So you pick the habit that you're looking to change and let's not change everything about ourselves in one day. Pick something for this week that you want to work on. It's Tuesday. Tuesday is the most productive day of the week. Um, according to Darren Hardy, <laughs> uh, Monday, everyone's getting back into the groove. You're kind of like, Oh, I don't want to be working. I don't want to be checking my email. I don't want to be doing this stuff. Tuesday is the most productive day. You're ready to commit. You're ready to go. So take action today to finding someone to keep you accountable and for you to keep accountable to their new habit changes as well. Have an amazing day, guys, and I hope that you liked Tuesday's topic.